I should say that the, the, the first sentence of a novel is, 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 is terrifying to me because you enter into the text and I, I, I always go crazy writing a first sentence. Once I have it, I can enter into the world, but sometimes it takes me more to, longer to write a first sentence that I like than the whole book itself. I mean, it's very perverse and very strange. But when I had this first sentence, I knew that Johnny, the narrator, was wearing a wonderful mask yeah. and we could start playing. Yeah. OK. Where shall I begin my unremarkable life? My hands were bound with a hangman's rope, a rifle dug into my ribs. My accomplices were slobbering at my side, a pair of yobs from Westchester who didn't comprehend the ways of York Island. It's him, they said, pointing to me with their snouts since their hands were tied as tight as mine. It's him, your worship. He's the devil. He made us do it. Tis true, said the second scoundrel. We're innocent as lambs, you're worthy. He hissed evil things in our ears, offered us pieces of silver to poison your soup. We're cooks, I swear we are, attached to your rebel army. The first scoundrel corrected him. Don't say rebel, Charles, say continentals. He's their king and commander. He was a giant, this commander and king, with reddish hair and a long nose. I liked him, truly liked him. The lord of all the rebels was an erstwhile land surveyor from Virginia, not a professional soldier and assassin like King George's generals. He had far more power than any monarch, even with a piddling army that could not stand in formation or fight in an open field. His pigtail was tied with a piece of fine silk. He was a gentleman with a farmer's rough hands. Please don't hang us, your worship, begged the scoundrels, slobbering again. They were stinking cowboys who worried the hills of Westchester and shouldn't have come to our waterfront. I paid them handsomely, but they were counting on more. They would have slaughtered me and disappeared with my purse once the poison had taken hold and the general sat with his young aides, all of them puking out their guts. George Washington blessed that name, the first Yob said. I'll repent, your worship, I will. Save us, Sir George, said the second. The general was no longer looking at these Yobs. His bodyguards blindfolded them with their own neckcloths and took them out to the gibbet, an ordinary hanging tree. He dismissed his aides and sat down at his portable writing desk with a glass of Madeira and a piece of mutton, but his youngest aide wouldn't leave. Excellency, what about him? He's a desperate character, meaning your humble servant. He might be hiding a knife somewhere on his person or under his patch. I don't believe in that impertinent eye patch. And then the young aide flicked his riding crop perilously close to my one good eye. He was hot to blind me. Shall I undress his eyes, sir? The general wouldn't answer him. He must have been sick with fatigue. I've seen it before in soldiers and clergymen who have a bit of the colic and bad teeth, grudgingly with murder in his own grim gray eyes. Murder for me, the young man left, and now the giant and I were alone. He got up from his desk, it could barely contain his knees, and cut my cords with a scalping knife. He'd been an Indian fighter long before he was a general, and some chief might have rewarded him with such a knife out of fear and trembling. What's your name, boy? You heard those lads, I'm the devil. I had to rub my hands because they'd gone to sleep. And John stocking some of the time, Sir John to my friends, or Professor John. How old are you, Professor? Seventeen, Your Excellency. Seventeen years and eleven days. And you go around poisoning people's soup? I had to be twice as clever as this rebel king. I didn't want him to guess my grand design. The poison was but a mix of magnesia and castor oil, a powerful purge. It couldn't have killed a flea. Well, he asked, impatient to rid himself of me. A ruse, sir. I knew it wouldn't work. I was hoping it would get me into your camp for a tete-a-tete. -tete. He laughed. He didn't have a tooth I could find, but some device that served his teeth. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't hang you. I could lend you a dozen. I'm attached to Sir William in a tinkering sort of way. 
Sir William Howe had ha sailed out of Boston with the entire British fleet and fell off the face of the earth. No one could find him, not George Washington, not King George. Tinkerer, are you soldier or civilian? Both. I'm a secret agent. 